What are the parameters of God's grace? This God who will almost always completely and totally surprise us with the ways that grace will enter our lives. The most unexpected way is how grace will enter our lives. Are you ready? Okay. Names and places do have particular meanings, and with the book of Ruth, that is greatly significant. Once upon a time, in House of Breadland, there was a famine. Can you believe it? A famine in House of Breadland. At a time when there was no king in Israel and all the people did what was right in their own eyes, that's the last verse of Judges, there was a man named My God is King. How about that? He left House of Breadland for, of all places, land of the despised enemy with his wife and two sons. And wouldn't he need to be a pious man to endure faithfully in that place? Now, his wife's name was Sweetness and Light. And his son's names were Sickness and Disease and Annihilation. <laughs> then, my God is King died, leaving Sweetness and Light with these two sons, whose names were sickness and disease and annihilation. The sons married women from the land of the despised enemy, one of whom was named Back of the Neck. The other was named My Cup Runneth Over. And who knew one could find a woman of such overflowing friendship in the land of the despised enemy? After about 10 years, the two sons died what could you expect with names like that? Leaving sweetness and light with neither husband nor sons, she only had two foreign widowed daughters-in-law. Ezra and Nehemiah, these were guys who came back from the exile. They were rebuilding Jerusalem, and they were trying to keep their beloved people of faith cohesive. And so one of their methods was to say, put away your foreign wives. That was Ezra's phrase. Widows, orphans were in a dire situation in the ancient Near East for the most part. They couldn't go out and get a job. They didn't have a support system without a husband or a male son. And so that was why all the emphasis on offspring and so forth. And that is one reason that the book of Ruth is so fascinating, because it's really focused on women and the ways that these women are able to survive in this kind of culture, even in the midst of widowhood and being foreigners and that kind of thing. Okay, right, sorry, fanning yourselves. It is a little adult content for this early in the morning at church, but it's in the Bible here. So, and I'm, seriously, it is not straightforward what the storyteller is saying. I think that is part of the fun, the delight of this story is that there are a number of things that are ambiguous and open to interpretation. So that's the fun of it, is seeing, well, what do you think happened? <laughs> what was that? They did it. They, did it. <laughs> they, they sealed the deal after the meal. They sealed the deal after the meal. Okay. <laughs> that one might have to make it in the book. <laughs> be that the ones who were reluctant to welcome, those who we think, uh, yeah, maybe I'm not so sure I can offer hospitality to that particular foreign daughter-in-law, 
it may be as we're struggling with offering that hospitality, they are the very ones who will offer hospitality to us. In other words, perhaps we focus too much on being the ones to give hospitality, when in fact there are God's gifts all around waiting to extend that hospitality to us. Another piece to consider.